On today's video, we're going to explore some really, really horrible, ugly websites. Why? Because I think that if you learn to understand why they suck so bad, you'll be able to design better websites. Let's go. Hey everybody and welcome to this episode of looking at ugly websites. Now, I know that's not what you're usually doing. Usually you like to go into this beautiful award-winning website and get inspired and think, ah, oh, if I can only do this amazing websites myself. However, I don't know that this is the most productive things that you, you can do because if you want to learn from other people's mistake, I think it will be useful to look at some badly designed website to understand what you do want to avoid when you're designing the, your next web project and I hope this is going to be helpful for you. So I just want to start off by saying kind of a disclaimer. I'm not doing this website to trash other designers work and to just laugh at bad design. I'm doing this. I always say that it's very easy to, you know, degrade somebody else and and pass comments and judge. However, you never know the full context of how they were working, what the constraints was, maybe even a designer wasn't involved, maybe there were some constraints that you don't know. So I'm not putting anybody's skills at, I'm not judging anyone here, I just want to go over these websites and explain why I think that they are not working and how maybe we could have improved them and avoid these mistakes for future um, you know, project. So let's get started. Fortunately, the guys at Ranking by SEO did the job for us and they actually ranked here the top 50 worst website designs that will make you cringe. Well, I don't think that we're gonna go over all of them, but let's just get started and see if we can find some commonality uh, among the worst websites. So the first one is for Yale School of Art, which is kind of ironic, right? They're a school of art. Why would their website look like this? So <laughs> this is what you see, and this is so overwhelming and confusing that you just do not know what you're should be looking at. So I do understand maybe they wanted to do something artistic and, you know, I don't know, brutal design or something like that. But the, the main problem here is that there is just so much thing going on here that you really do not know where to look. There is completely no sense of hierarchy here, right? So basically, in terms of hierarchy, usually you go from the top thing, the biggest thing that takes more attention, you look there first, and then you move to the next thing. But here, because you have something moving in the background, immediately you want to look here to understand what you see. And even though the kind of the, the, the logo, I would say, or the name of the website is here, you do not immediately look here, even this bright box here of get news from Yale School of Art is so, you know, bright is actually brighter than this, because this is black on yellow. Um, you really don't know, should I be looking at here? Should I be looking at here? You really kind of lose context very, very fast. Now, you know, when we are usually going into website, we have because we do it all the time, we already have patterns that we're looking for, right? We know that the logo is going to be at the top left corner. We know that usually navigation is that at the top right corner. And we know to gauge from just checking these corners really fast, we know to answer the question of where are we? What's in this website? How can I get there as fast as possible? But here, there's, you know, maybe th this is you can call this top left. Okay, so I'm at the Yale School of Art website. But what's in this website? I don't know, because there's no navigation at the top right. The navigation is actually here behind the logo. Um, just along with pause animation and this this it says here this website exists as an ongoing collaboration experiment in digital publishing so i know yeah they were going for something experimental and i think that being experimental again is fine and we can and we should try to push the borders especially when it comes to art schools and design schools but i think here i don't know what they were trying to go for because usually you know, when you do a website, there is a goal for the website, right? There is something that you need to achieve and you need to explain the, the, the visitor on the website what it is that you want them to achieve. Is it to register? Is it to check some specific project or or something? There, And here, I'm going here, again, I'm overwhelmed by the animation and even if I pod them, I do not know where to look and I do not really know 
What do they want me to do? I mean, the biggest thing I see here maybe is a click here, which is call to action, but why? Why would I click here? A button that says click here is actually meaningless. Tell me what's going to happen when I click here. Is it now I see it's events, calendar, and editor detail. So I don't even know what's going to happen and what will I see when I choose click here. So this is like a very, very bad, ambiguous call to action. And so in general, I think that the website, the, the way that it looks right now is not going to help Yale School of Art achieve their, their goals. Now, maybe they have a great brand as a, like a premium school anyway, and they don't care about how the website functions. But I think that in this case, the website does not serve them very well. I don't know if anybody's checking analytics on this, if anybody's owned this as a project with goals. However, I have a very big doubt if this website is kind of serving them well right now. Let's move on into the next website. So the next website is the website of Susan Collins, which I think is the author of the all of the Hunger Games. Yeah, kind of Hunger Games series. And she's, I guess, a very famous author at the moment. And this is her personal website. Um, and you can see, welcome. Thanks for visiting my website. Here's a picture of me with a rat in Central Park. I actually can't see that picture. I guess maybe this is the picture with a rat. It's very hard to see, but... Again, you go into this website and you're thinking, okay, they have the, they've solved the I know where I am, right? I'm at the Susan Collins website, but what should I be looking at, right? Should I be looking at this cover of this new image? Should I be looking at the navigation? Should I be looking at selected works, which is actually bigger than the welcome message? The hierarchy here and the layout are overwhelming. It's, I would really, really simplify and, and, Again, based on what Susan wants us to do here. So I would, and this is what I do when every time I start a website project with a client, I try to understand what are the goals. So if I would sit down with Susan, I would try to understand, hey, Susan, what are your goals for the website? Do you want to show them your recent book that is coming up, which is the reason that you're showing this? And maybe you want people to register for, um, to be notified when the book comes out so they can purchase it. Maybe that's your goal. Or maybe you just want to show them you know, what what other people said about you so people will know that you're famous and successful. Or maybe you just want to show a little bit of your personality. But right now, this is so messy. You have a personal message here. You have kind of um, all of these kind of testimonials on the right and just random images on the on on the middle here. It's not, it kind of lays out, the. it, it uses the layout of a blog of a very old fashioned blog where you would have the content in the center and then some right navigation, left navigation, but it's just random content here with, with I feel without any kind of story into it. Now, this is very funny because usually, you know, she's an author. She's supposed to be all about how to tell a story. And a story is you go into a website, it's usually like a story. You need some kind of an intro of what this story is going to be about. You need some kind of, you know, a meat in the story and, and some ending to the story it needs to lead you somewhere. But right here, I feel like we're landing on this and we're just like, it's in your face. It's not helping me. It's not leading me to anything. It's not that I learn more about her, what she's doing right now. I just know that, okay, she writes books and, you know, people say the books are good, but they're, they're not leading me into it and they're not helping me achieve anything, you know, in terms of the upcoming book or previous books, just maybe you want to give me a link or something. I just, you know, it's just a bunch of info in my face. I feel very unedited and very not telling story, which it, as I said, it's kind of disappointing for I'm an author of, of great stories. All right, let's check out the third website. <laughs> MGB, I can't not laugh when I see this because this is, to me, this is kind of like a joke. I mean, really? Do websites still look like this? Is this not just kind of like a joke of bad design? MGBD parts and services. I honestly just scrolled all the way to the bottom just to look for, maybe they did not update this website since the 90s. <clears throat> but I actually see here that they did update it in 2018. So I don't know. I want to say no designer was involved in this and the client designed this themselves. 
However, this takes a lot of effort to put all the navigation links here on cars. I think, I don't know that any client would do be able to do that. So, you know, let's let's break it down. Let's break it down besides the fact that, oh my God, the first thing it's overwhelming. Okay, I know that it's about cars and I know that it MGBD parts and services. So we've got that figured out, but what's, What's going on here? I mean, the navigation is all here, very, very unreadable and very in a non-obvious place. As I said, usually we're, we're looking to look for a navigation at the top right corner and this is very, it's very hard to understand what's going on here. Every title is a different size, font size. So it's very, it takes a lot, a lot of effort just to understand what's going on here. Um, we have this kind of like, moving news news kind of like uh, thing here and it, we have two of them actually so just trying to look here and understand what's going on you really it's really hard to concentrate then again you have this list here which might resemble those images of the links so you might think there are some more links and clickable but no these ones are just actually an image um of I guess things that they offer or or do but or sell I don't know but it's very very confusing so you just see lists of red type um, and you don't really know what's going on here I guess they want to show you a lot of images of cars and it's okay and you can do this and you can prov provide a lot of data and a lot of images and galleries in the website to show the variety of what you do um, but the way that this is served right now without order um, is just overwhelming and not very helpful, I think, to anybody because I don't really know, I mean, what can I do here? I can see very big online store, but this is just a shop. Where is the shop? Should I get there? Do I, what's going on? Again, I'm very, very overwhelmed by everything that's that's going on here. I think there is, you know, a lot of, Conf oh my god I mean I'm just scrolling here and like I can't see the email because it's like blue on oh I wanted to say it's blue on black but now I see that this whole thing is an image so even if I want to maybe copy the phone number to call them or the address I want to put it in Google Maps or something I can't because all the text is on an image so this there's so many mistakes in this website that I just I just honestly I have to say even though you know I'm I'm doing web design myself like premium web design for clients I would feel that this client if they didn't have the budget like guys go with some kind of a template and some very simple website builder like for $10 you would probably get a better result than because I think this was a huge project just because, again, I think this was a lot of effort and it's just not helping you. You try to do something custom here, but without, like, it's just it's just not, not really working. Okay, so I want to sum up some of the key takeaways that I think that you can see among the three websites. And they are when you don't have a clear strategy and you know what the goal here, you're trying to overwhelm people with too much information. You have to be very, very clear about what you want the website to achieve in order to kind of simplify the experience of people landing in your website and learning about a business. You can't put everything in their face up front. You have to have clear hierarchies and a clear story to tell and help people understand where you wanna take them and, and what you offer and what is the clear call to action in the website. So I hope this was helpful for you guys to understand how to not do these mistakes when you design websites for yourself or for your clients. And uh, yeah, if you wanna learn more about web design, make sure you check our courses in the description and subscribe for more videos about design, web design, and I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.